Remember that video on what questions an engineer can ask you during your interview? They would typically spend the first 20 to 25 minutes grilling you, asking you a question. But that's only first half of the interview because the other half, the other 5 to 10 minutes, would be the golden time, golden window for you to ask questions to them. Yeah, the rose has flipped. The dynamic has changed. Remember, always ask questions and always have questions to ask. This is when you make your comeback. Fight! Just kidding. But really, these 5 to 10 minutes will be a great time for you to understand that engineer, that person you might be working with, the team, the culture, the company, on and on and on. Therefore, in this video, I'm going to go over 14 questions that you can ask that engineer during your interview. And I will break them down into three categories and you can pick and choose which ones that matter to you the most. This is going to be another straightforward and informational video, so grab your favorite drink and let's get into it, y'all. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. I have broken down all 14 questions into three categories. So first, we have general questions, generally about their experiences. And next is personal questions, something specifically about this engineer, like their take, their point of view. And lastly, we have the job function dependent like about engineering, the things that they do. And I have a few sample questions for each one. And if you want the full comprehensive list, make sure to stay to the end for the bonus content. Now let's dive right into the first question. What's your past experience working with designers? I think this is a must ask because if you were to work with an engineer, you want to know what their experience is like working with other designers. Did they even work with a designer in the past? They will ask you. So Justine, have you ever worked with an engineer before? What is the experience like? You're literally flipping the question back to them. So David, do you collaborate with designers in your day-to-day -day work? What was it like? Next question. Can you give me an example where you disagree with designers? And how did you resolve it? This is a classic conflict resolution question. Something must come up in the collaboration and you want to know what happened there and how they resolve it. Do they talk it out? Do they find other people to chime in? Do they use data to back their arguments? Did they use user testing or just opinion? What is it? That's the question to find out. Next, how long is each project? How big of a scope are they? Are there a lot of MVPs? If you guys are not familiar with MVP, MVP is a term that you will hear and use a lot in Silicon Valley. It means minimal viable product. It describes a product, a project that only captures the very, very essence and core functionality of a project. It's something that's very simple that they just want to build, hack together, put it together really quickly and test it out, give it to the public, to the users to find out. So I think the very minimal viable product for Dropbox at the time is just to upload files from the computer to Dropbox, drop it into the box. That is the MVP. And of course, now it has so many more functionalities out of that. And this question is looking to the kind of projects that you might be working on if you were to join this company. Did they work on a lot of MVPs with simple, simplified functionality that does not have a lot of depth and they aim for speed and mostly use it for testing and gauging the market? Or do you work on really refined products, really honed to the craft, looking to the motion, visual interaction, really, really detailed work? Because those are two very different types of projects you can get. Next question. Are there any prototypers on the team? Do engineers participate in user testing? What you actually want to get out of this question is, do you, the engineer, create prototypes for user testing or is it mainly designer's job? That also kind of shows you the, the, the team structure, how close engineers work with designers in a project base, or do they only take care of engineering and you do design, you do research, you do prototyping, or they're able to help you out, build up really close production, high fidelity, interactive prototypes for users. Depending on the company you join, some product, they actually require higher level fidelity and interactivity in the prototype in order to get users true feedback. For example, if you work on AI product, for example, you cannot really fake a chatbot. You really have to get a semi close to real thing chatbot for people to type random things to, to test all the edge cases. You cannot plan out all the scenarios, have all the questions that people might ask in your chatbot. 
So in that case, it will be really useful to have, really useful and helpful to have engineers to back you up to support you to do the prototyping. And just make sure when you ask that question, do not turn it into a leading question. Like, do you create a prototype for user testing? This is just a caution for you when you ask a question, don't turn it into a leading question. Okay, so next, can you tell me a challenging project that you worked in the past and who you worked with? On this is also the time for you to know what a challenging project is like for them. Is it because the scope is way too big? Is it because a super tight deadline? Is it because marketing had a lot of requests? Is it because we they don't even know who their users are? Like what is it and how did they work on it? Who did they need to pull together to work on this? Next question. Have you ever done any projects that you don't think is worth doing? And then you follow up by why? What happened and what or why did it happen anyway? This is a question where you get to understand the company culture a bit. Like what is their habits? What is the pattern? What is their culture like? Do they always do random things all the time? Or are they not committed or not confident about their project? Did they not do thorough due diligence to find out this is exactly what you need to build? Or maybe oh, let's, let's try this out and I think this is good. Like why would it happen? What happened? And then from through the follow-up question, you get to know what it is, what happened, and what does the engineer think about it. Maybe they say, I don't like it, or blah, blah, blah. So you get to hear the opinion and perspective from this person as well. And speaking of perspective, let's get into the next section, next category, personal questions about how they really think, their point of view about this person that you might be working with on a day-to-day -day basis. So first question, how do you compare working at your previous company to this one? If they used to work at Facebook, now they work at Google. Why did they make the change? How do they see the difference? What inspired the change and what is their take on their current position? Next, why did you join this company? What keeps you here? This is a very important question. These two go hand in hand. You have to ask them together because the first question, you get to know why they left. And then now you want to know why they are still here. The last thing you want is you feel like this is one of the brightest persons you've ever met. You're excited about working with them. Excellent, that's great, that's awesome. But then if you don't know what keeps them here, after you join, they might have left already and that's what you don't want. So make sure that you kind of get a sense of like where their minds are at. To kind of get a sense and gauge what their plans are down the road in the next three, five years. Next, what do you enjoy working with designers the most? With this question, you will know whether they like to work with designers or they have eyes for design or they respect design, they advocate for design, or not. You can really easily tell the difference. Some engineers, they might tell you, Yeah, oh, I love design. This is like great. This, you know, my favorite app is this. They will just tell you about it. Like, it's like a really easy answer for them. But some of them, it's also easy answer, but the answer might be, Yeah, in my current team, we just use design as a guideline, and then we just build and ship. We do a lot of projects like that. They're not going to go too much in depth and in detail about it because that's just the nature of what it is. It's simple to them, but that's not something that you might want because it sounds like an assembly line and that's another way to say there's nothing to enjoy about. It's just, just what it is. You just work. There's a task. I do it. That's it. Next question. If you were to give constructive feedback to designers on your team, what would that be? I think this is a great one because one, you get to know if they have given feedback before and two, what is their style of communication is. Maybe they will tell you, yeah, I give them feedback all the time, which, which means they might be a great partner to be collaborating with because you get to learn, you get to improve, turn yourself into a better designer every day. Which is great. Last part, the last category, job function dependent about the engineering, their expertise their prowess, see what they specialize in. First question, how is this iOS app built? What framework do you guys use? Because when you build an iOS app, you can just use Swift, you can just Objective-C, back in the days. They can also use Google Material Framework, which I actually don't like at all. Asking this question really quickly tells you which side this company is on. Are they on native iOS, iOS, Swift iOS for Apple ecosystem iOS, or they use some framework that help them build fast and get hit the ground and running. That's great, you make things fast, you get to the market first, you get more customers maybe in that way. But at the same time, we are trading off all the good stuff that Apple has built 
in your product. So if any app, you might have to refresh a lot of things. You might run into a lot of customization roadblocks that you cannot design for. So either you get rid of the entire framework or that part of the framework and build a, another thing on top. I'm not going to go too deep into the weeds now because I can go on forever. I have seen this happen and played out in front of me. Not a big fan. And that's why I said this question is for me because I want to know which side they are. Okay, calm down. Next, how do you achieve iOS and Android parity? You have two apps, iOS, Android, they should look and feel and function almost the same way. Of course, there's some platform specific nuance and things that are impossible to align on, but mostly they should be quite similar, right? Same font, same color palette, same 90% interaction pattern style etc so there are things that you can learn now how do they achieve that or are they kind of go everywhere like the ios and android team don't sync or so many more engineers on ios than android or vice versa like what's going on next how is design system implemented in the platform is there a team behind it is there a design system team behind it or is engineering managing it who created the system how often is the system updated that's the type of question you want to get at with this one. Last question, how do you ensure there are enough engineering resources to achieve the quality the design is striving for? Let me repeat that one more time. How do you ensure there are enough engineering resources to achieve the quality design team is asking for? This question might be more suitable for engineering managers because they're on the top, they see the people, they move people around, they gather people together put resources together, get resources from elsewhere, externally or internally. You can see in the answer if they're avoiding that part, like design team is striving for a certain quality. If they have the eye for design, if they have the care for design, they will mention that back to you. They will repeat it back to you. Yeah, so design team, we're trying to do this and then we try our best to align and we, we, we hire more engineers for front end support, etc. Or they will just dodge that part, they skip that part, they just put it aside, sweep it under the rug. That's why this is a one bird, two stokes question. And that is all 14 questions. Thank you for your patience sitting through all 14 questions. I know, I know you're maxing out your attention span. That's why now is a great time for bonus content. Bonus content if you want a copy of this worksheet you only have to follow three simple steps step one smash the like button down below to help support this video step two leave a comment down below in this video and step three join my newly live and free discord community dm me there and i will send you not just this version but the full comprehensive list of question version lastly thank you guys for watching like and subscribe to support this very very small channel there are a lot more ux and finance content that can help you advance your design career and make more money from ux portfolios resumes to investing and option trading take a look and see what piques your interest i will see you all in the next video cheers